The question I have been asked over and over again is what is the best starting antenna for a new ham? Now, depends on what they're looking for, but for HF DX, to try to make the longest distance contact you can as a new amateur radio operator, I swear by it and will say till the end that the quarter wave vertical is absolutely that antenna. I feel so strongly about it that in my book, uh, Salty Waltz Portal Antenna Sketchbook, um, first chapter, the very first antenna is the quarter wave vertical. And, um, and within that, I've sketched it and uh, I've even done the math for newer hams. Uh, the formula is in here, but to show them uh, how easy it is to build. Now, I love this antenna. Even today, I get out on the beach, like there's, if everyone knows or has seen the Red Slug telescopic whip, that's a quarter wave vertical. And I've had some great times with that. As a quarter wave on the beach, as a matter of fact, this past year, I went out with a little five watt QRP radio. I, that was the antenna I picked and put it out there. And um, man, I'm blasting across the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, I was by the ocean. Yes, I had all those advantages, but I'll get to that. We're gonna go over the theory and, uh, and the science behind what's going on there. You know, yesterday, a person, uh, probably the person I respect most in the ham tuber universe, my good friend Tim, G5TM. His channel is Hands On Ham Radio. If there's one thing you take away from this video, it is that you should be subscribed to his channel. I'll put a link below. But Tim and I was talking, and Tim sent me a, uh, a message and said, Hey, Walt, did you see this? And uh, he said, go to about the 50 minute mark. And I did. And it's a uh, very, uh, and these guys I like too. I have nothing against them, but they are uh, four guys doing a live stream. I've been on their show a couple times and they're talking about the best HF antenna for new hams. And um, one of the newer guys said, uh, talking about the quarter wave vertical, said that uh, it was a cloud warmer and uh, not that antenna, not a DX antenna. And I gotta be honest with you, it's one of the cringiest moments I've ever seen on ham radio live stream. And I, even the guys, uh, the, the, the older guys, the guys that have been with the channel, in their defense, for, were trying to say, no, 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 no. But he doubled down and kept going that it was his Elmer told him it was a cloud warmer and not that antenna. So I wanna correct that right now and tell you why it is not a cloud warmer and why it is the DX antenna to start with. First off, it's so easy to build, but let's just go into the the science the theory behind it i modeled this i got up this morning it's been bothering me so i got up this morning and modeled it and uh and when i model this thing over regular ground not just you know me on sand by salt water whatever way inland on normal ground this thing still has a takeoff angle somewhere around 21 22 degrees more like 21 degrees uh with mine now th that's a good takeoff angle for dx in itself Perfect? No. Good? Yes. One thing you got to remember, everyone puts, they think in their minds takeoff angle and they think that it's a linear thing. No. RF doesn't come off your antenna, you know, like a water hose straight in a stream. It sprays and it's out there. So even if you have, let's say, 21, 22 degrees, um, you come down to somewhere near, you know, 14, 13, 14 degrees, you're still getting one DBI. You're still getting a, you know, that antenna is fully functional uh, at, at down in the lower things because um, that RF is still there. So your wave's not just, as we always think of a straight line, it's a mass moving through and you're making, you know, that, that wave kind of changes and bouncing off the uh, ionosphere at different angles. Yeah, you still have skip zones and things you're missing, but you're still operating very well as a DX antenna. Now, you take me, for instance, I get out on salt water, and I, it, what I'm getting at here is it's all about the ground below it. And I get out on salt water, um, I'm, I'm looking at, because of that great ground below it, about a 10 degree takeoff angle. And on, on top of that, I'm getting about four, you know, a little over four dBi. So I'm getting a really a lot. I'm getting a lot, as I say, a lot of juice for the squeeze for a simple little antenna uh, over on a salt, nice salty um, earth below me. So if you could come up with perfect ground, like zero, like just the absolute theoretic, theoretically the best ground ever, but you can't do this because it doesn't exist. But if you could, um, your takeoff angle would be zero degrees. Now, Let's talk about that. What is a quarter wave vertical? It's half of a dipole. 
What's going on here, or it, it is a dipole antenna per se, because what you're doing with the ground below you and how good that ground is, is you're creating a mirror to mirror that thing. So you're having a quarter wave above and a quarter wave below. If we took the model that I modeled this morning uh, with perfect ground and just mirrored it, flipped it over on each other, you can see that um, you're looking at it almost as if you were looking down on top of a dipole, but this is on an elevation view here. This is what looking from the side. Um, that if that perfect ground was there, you would see that uh, that's almost what it's like to look down on top of a dipole antenna. So what you really need to know that um, for a DX antenna, the ground below it and the the counterpoise system below it, the radial system or whatever, is a big, big, big part of that. So for a quarter wave to be a, a quarter wave vertical to be a cloud warmer, it would really have to almost have no, zero, no ground below it. And we all know that it's all about building a good ground plane underneath it and, and that type of thing. So there you go. There's my thought on it, my, my feelings on it. I really, I have built this antenna and it's so easy to build. I've got a, um, what we call squid pole or, a, or a, you know, a fishing pole or whatever without uh, just fiberglass. And uh, 17 feet, tape a piece of wire, a five meter or, you know, whatever it measures out for you for where you want to be in the band on the, say, the 20 meter band. Um, it's really easy from 20 down to 10 to build this and just tape wire to it and put, uh, you know, a ground plane below it and start making amazing, just incredible DX contacts. Same thing if you've got, say, a telescopic whip that you can get vertical with a base at the bottom, something like the, uh, the red slug, as we call it, or whatever. And get um, it, the best ground system you can below it. Um, you're going to work some DX. I tell you, I went back through my log and looking, and uh, and I, I I looked at the dates where I, I filmed and when I was using a quarter wave or whatever. I've talked around the world. I mean, just absolutely around the world, DX with a quarter wave vertical, and you can too. So I'm going to stand to it, stand by it, regardless of what others may say. This is absolutely the best beginners first DX vertical antenna to build. And I, I highly encourage you to um, listen and, and, and research yourself, build one and see how it performs for you. Don't listen and believe everybody. Don't even believe everything I say. Go out and do it and, and make it for yourself. And, and, and that's really what it's all about. That's why I try to, you know, everything you see me talking about here, I, I'm building it. I go out and do it. Yes, I have the advantage of an incredible ground system underneath it when I build a vertical, but that's what I'm all about. Um, so I tell you what, as I said earlier, my friend Tim, G5TM, Hands On Ham Radio, go subscribe to him. I'm sure I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nudge him. I'm going to say, Tim, do a video on a quarter wave vertical again. I know he's done others, but um, I, I, I talked to him yesterday and kind of nudged him. It's like, you need to, you're, I just love listening to his insight on antennas. So go over, subscribe to Tim. I'm going to push Tim's buttons and get him to do a video and uh, on this subject as well. But absolutely my thoughts, he may feel different. I don't know. But my thoughts on this thing is the quarter wave vertical is the first DX antenna to build as a new ham. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, didn't want that to be a rant. Just kind of wanted to uh, get that out there because it was kind of, uh, I was cringing a little bit and I wanted to get it, get things straight. So if you're into uh watching ham radio YouTubers talk about antennas, watching me go out and actually do it, get out on the beach or out on land, whatever, and building an antenna, please subscribe. And until next time, I'm K4OGO Salty Walt. Stay salty, my friends.